I am now joined by one of the men coming to the co-main event of LFA 44 on Friday night, June the 29th. Of course, the guy we've had on the show many a times before, Casey Kenny. Casey, as always, man, I appreciate time. I guess part of the storyline with this fight here, you're going up to 135. And I know we've talked about that in the past. You're like, hey, 35 comes up, I'm going to take it. 25's there, I'm going to take it. Is that just basically the, hey, they offered me a 35 fight and uh, I was ready to go? Yeah, exactly, dude. Uh you know, last LFA in January, we went through quite a bit of opponents, and I was just like 25, 35, catch weight, whatever, I'll take anything, you know. And uh, this time, first guy they offered me happened to be Roman Salazar at uh, 135. So I'm always for uh, not cutting weight, you know. Uh, of course, Roman. Uh, definitely either weight class at yeah. any time. Roman, uh, former UFC fighter, um, you know, is uh, how were you familiar with him when uh, the fight offer came in? Yeah, uh, you know, actually, he was one of the guys in January they threw at me. Uh, he, I don't know, whatever reason he had going on um, in January wasn't the time for that. And then, uh, you know, I've also been watching him fight in the local scene, the WFF, before he got into the UFC. I think uh, one of the first fights I checked out. Uh, Maybe even before I had my first amateur fight out here, it happened to be Roman Salazar and I think like Michael Parker. Uh, you know, pretty two pretty high level pro guys uh, going at it. So he's been at it for a while. I've been uh, watching him uh, compete for a long time. Did you always kind of feel like it was going to be destiny that you two would would uh, you know step into the cage against each other? Uh, you know, I guess uh, I never really thought about 135 up until you know I got a little bit bigger when I first started as an amateur. I was definitely. Uh, a 125er and then you know mid mid 20s kind of settled in i thickened up a little bit and uh you know now 35 is in the question too so uh you know i always saw him as somebody the, that i kind of looked up to and you know somebody to uh chase after but really not in my weight class at the time when i you know when i was young thinking about that but uh now he's right in front of me so uh i got business to take care of uh, what gets you excited about this fight ah uh, man uh you know, uh, former UFC vet, you know, a tough, durable guy, uh, you know, be really my first UFC vet that I've went up, get, went up against, you know, I think uh, my last like four opponents, five opponents, uh, you know, since the Tachi Palace title uh, have been UFC caliber uh, opponents. Um, but this is a, a guy that's, you know, been there, done that. Uh, and now he's back on the come up and looking to uh, get back in, you know, definitely uh, not my first time against a veteran, but uh It'll be a great fight, man. It's always a good uh, good time going in against those uh, veterans. You know, of course, uh, people remember, uh, you know, last year being on the Contender Series. And, of course, Contender Series going on now. Is there any piece of advice you would offer anyone that's going on that show? Uh, man, just be patient. You know, I watched, the, I watched, I think, every Contender Series from last season and even this season. And, uh, you know, you can tell the second time I came out, I was a lot calmer. Uh, I settled into the fight the way I wanted to. The first time I was like, oh, my God, there's Dana White. I got to knock this guy out. And I was tripping over my own feet type of thing. Um, and I noticed a lot of other people did that as well. Uh, you know, uh, it, it's a fight and the, the adrenaline dump happens. And But I think it's, it's happening even more on the Contender Series. So uh, just take a deep breath and be patient. You know, because, I mean, look, we, we all know with that show, it's about going out there and Getting, getting that first round finish. Everyone everyone knows it. It's not like it's some hidden secret. Um uh, but it calls you know, it talks about being, you know, you gotta be calm and you gotta be patient. I mean, for you, is that something that it took some time for you to just get that experience in, inside the cage to kind of, you know, acquire that trait? Yeah, definitely. I remember my first like you know, pretty much all my amateur fights except for the last one. Um, it was, I don't even really remember what happened, you know, my training kicked in and, uh, it, it went good, but it was like, oh man, that was like a total, uh, you know, mind fuck. Uh, I, I didn't even know what was going on. Um, I got out of the cage and I was like, that was awesome, but I don't really remember what happened or what I was doing, you know? And then, uh, kind of down the line as a pro, you know, you settle in, you start to see things. And then, uh, now even, uh, you know, I had a little bit of the contender series with the pressure of, you know, the caliber of the fight. Uh, but, you know, now I just settle into the fights. It's it's like another walk in the park. 
you know, I was uh, I was watching the the PFL show last night, and they're talking to Sean O'Connell, who uh, didn't exactly have the greatest of first rounds, and then he comes back and in the second round gets knocked out, and he's doing the post fight interview, and, and he's basically like, uh, yeah, I, I really don't remember what happened. Uh, for you, how often does that happen? Where like you know you get the victory, whatnot, and you know you're doing a, a post fight interview, and in your mind you're trying to think, okay, what happened in the first round? What happened? Does that happen a lot? Where like in the moment you just kind of you kind of forget. Yeah, I mean, every time I fought, I went back and watched the video, and it's completely different on video than how it is in my mind. Like, there's been a couple fights, uh, like the Cactac fight uh, at Tachi Palace. You know, I broke my hand, and uh, we butted heads, and I split my eye open. And, you know, it was a pretty good fight, but I never really – I didn't say I dominated, but it was pretty even. You know, I, But I felt like I got beat up the whole time just because I came out, you know, all banged up. And I go back and I watch the fight, and I was like, you know, hey, it was – it was just a pretty close fight. I actually had a lot of good moments, you know, up until the, the, the choke out. But in my head, it was like, man, I got beat up the whole time until, uh, you know, until I tapped him out. And a couple other fights have been like that as well. But, um, you know, it's definitely different every time when you watch the video. Is it, is you, do you all walk in those sessions like, oh man, man, this is not going to be a good film session because just because of that situation, like you feel like, man, I didn't perform well, but then, you know, is, is it kind of that, oh God, it's like, I come from a football world where if you have a bad game, the last thing you want to do is sit in that film room with the coach where they're going to ridicule you. Is that kind of what it's like for you? Right. Well, you know, fortunately, uh, out of 10 professional fights, I've, I've won all 10, you know, in my head at least. And, uh, so I've went back and, you know, just kind of see how I did. And, uh, I don't think I've had a, a bad performance really. You know, I definitely, uh, had, you know, better ones than others, but I feel like I've, you know, in 10 pro fights, I've pretty much dominated the whole time. So, uh, uh, I haven't, I haven't got to experience that just yet, but, you know, going back and watching film, I used to film all my judo and wrestling matches and, uh, the ones I lost were definitely the hardest ones to watch. But you got to watch him because you, you got to figure out what you did. You got to, you have to, you have to. And of course, part of the sport is just evolving. And I know another interview you did, you mentioned about being in Vegas, training with Extreme Couture. You went to the PI, and, and we've talked about you going to, and training at, at various gyms. What, what was your biggest takeaway being around Extreme Couture bring, and being around the PI that uh, you've brought back to your home gym? Uh, you know, uh, definitely, I guess. Uh, it was my first time at the Extreme Couture gym, but you know, I just went to train with a friend, Kyle Reyes, uh, who actually uh, got a he got a second round finish uh, in the ACB uh, uh, fights in Australia. But uh, you know, just knowing that the stuff that we're doing here uh, at my home gym is you know pretty identical to you know all the stuff that all these other guys are doing. Um, you know, I, something I kind of already knew, but just going out there getting the work in with the different bodies the high level guys and just kind of noticing that hey these guys are these are guys are kind of doing the same thing i'm doing you know maybe i'm doing it just a little bit different but you know uh it's the stuff that works um and it's just kind of good to go out and you know get different bodies get different looks uh people don't know your stuff you don't know their stuff you know which is exactly how the fight is so um it's it's, it's a great experience to take you know especially the high level guys uh, you know, a win here, you, you know, would get you one step closer to, to that ultimate goal is, do you even allow yourself to think about that? Uh, you know, not anymore. Uh, I went through a period of the, you know, like the contender series this summer, I kind of like settled into, I should be in the UFC type of thing. And, uh, now it's just, um, I got to sit back, you know, enjoy life, enjoy that I, I'm a fighter. I love fighting, you know, whether it's for, you know, LFA uh, or the UFC or Contender Series, doesn't matter where it's at, an amateur event, you know, not possible anymore, but uh, I just love fighting and I love training and uh, just take it one step at a time. You know, after this next one, if they sign me, that'd be great. But if not, you know, line the next guy up. I'm just going to keep putting people away until uh, until they beg for me. You mentioned about that love for fighting. You mentioned, hey, you love fighting. You love training. You know, some guys might say, hey, they may not necessarily love the training part of it. But for you, is is there ever a time where like your love maybe goes down a notch? Maybe it's if you have like a bad day in the room. Yeah, I mean, everybody has their ups and downs, but uh, you know that's what makes you tough, and that's you learn from all of it. And 
you know, I've I haven't had uh, I've had a pretty good road, but I haven't had a perfect road along the way. I'm definitely learning uh, still to this day. And uh, but man, there, there's a lot of stuff that I've been through that that guys only get to experience, you know, when they're at that top level. So all these lumps that I'm taking right now, um, when it, when it is my time to make my run. I'll be ready. Uh, you know, I've already been there, done that. And, uh, you know, maybe there's a few more things to learn, but I feel pretty confident uh, making a run, you know, at the top level right now. We, we mentioned at the start, 35, 25, whatever comes up. It is, you know, let's just say a short notice opportunity came up in, you know, say the UFC. Is it that same mentality? Hey, if it's a 35, let's go. If it's 25, let's go. I mean, is, is, is that I mean, mentality? They, they, it's out of the question, but they want me at 45, 55, 70, I don't care. I, I would say yes. I'd, I'd fight them all, you know, especially uh, a UFC debut. Um that's a, that's a no-brainer for sure, hundred percent. But uh, yeah, either one, twenty-five, thirty-five, uh, I'd take either one. You find yourself watching every flyweight fight in the UFC just because you, you never know when that call could come. Let's just say I, I watch every flyweight fight and, and I just sit back and shake my head and, and smile. That's all I can do. I just sit back, shake my head, smile, and wait my turn. Yeah, I did. I did think of you uh, when I was watching the uh, the New York show when uh, Shorty Torres made his debut. Made, made me think of you. Of uh, we no, almost uh, saw that fight. We almost I, saw that I, fight. I was hoping the my manager actually texted me about that fight. Uh, and uh, actually, Jared Brooks is a dream fight for me. Um, I used to wrestle with his brother, and I've known him since he's been a little a little guy uh, running around freestyle wrestling tournaments in Indiana. Uh, I think we've actually had a couple submission wrestling matches as kids, uh, warming up for wrestling, uh, tournaments and stuff. So, uh, I guess we could say we were kind of like rivals, you know, like, uh, m- my senior year of high school, I placed fourth, he placed fifth, his, his okay. older brother. Um, so, and then, you know, shoot, I think the first time we wrestled, uh, was like 10 years old, 11 years old. So we last wrestled for a good six, seven year span. You know, we saw each other a handful of times. So that that's a that's a super interesting matchup, and I also I think he's got a lot of holes in this game. So I think uh, that would be a great fight. A crazy ending in that fight. I, I mean, <laughs> I mean he's he's winning the entire fight, and right, then right. one mistake. Yep. So uh, you know his, his last fight, he, you know, he impressed me with the, you know, he actually threw some punches, got down, and was you know I thought I thought it was going to go the other way. Um, I mean, it it did go the other way, but not exactly how we planned. Yeah, yeah, but just uh, just another classic form. One mistake and it can end your night. So, but we do look forward to seeing your fight here at LFA forty four there uh, in Arizona. As always, Casey, appreciate time and let everyone know where they can follow you on social media. Yeah, for sure, man. Always a pleasure to uh, be on the show. Uh, but uh, you can follow me at CKMMA one twenty five on Twitter or Instagram, and then you can also follow me at uh, Casey Kenny on Facebook.